When COVID-19 hit and most industries started working remotely, the Disability Advocacy Resource Unit thought, how are people with disability going to be able to be included when working online? The following video is a demonstration on some good and some not so good practices to make your online meetings more accessible and inclusive for people with disability. This video was made on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to the land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to the elders, past, present and emerging. The following video is based on a true story, though the characters have had their names changed to protect their social media standing. Hi everyone, thanks for joining today's session on our company CFSR. Sorry, I haven't got my camera on, didn't have time to do my makeup and you don't want to see me without my makeup on, believe me. Anyway, this should be a pretty simple session. The CFSR is pretty easy to understand and without giving too much away, our company results are awesome. I might just hand it straight over to our resident expert, Keith, to take us through the CFSR. Thanks, Karen. So yeah, I'll just share my screen and take you through the CFSR here. Hang on a sec while I get the screen share going. Um, hi, Keith, it's Natasha here. Um, I'm vision impaired. I won't be able to read your screen. Oh, okay. Um, Karen, what should we do? Oh, hi, Natasha. Sorry. Yes, I forgot about you. Um, I'll just send you some info after the session. Is that okay? Sure, fine. Um, hello, it's Melissa here. Sorry, what's going on? Who is the host of me and Karen? I'm deaf and I can't tell you what you're saying without your camera on. Oh, hi, Melissa. I didn't know you were in the meeting either. <laughs> my bad. Um, it's me, Karen. Um, so, sorry, turning my camera on now. Um, how do you turn it on again? Excuse me? Karen, um, you could use a shortcut key, um, Control-V, to turn your camera on. Keep it down, Keith. I'm in an important meeting. So sorry, everyone. Uh, hi, Laura. Got those kids again, I hear. Pesky little so-and-sos. What have I missed? Oh, we're just getting started. You need to do your schoolwork. No, I can't help you. I'm in a meeting. Um, I'm just trying to get my camera going for Melissa. Does anyone know how to turn the camera feature on? Uh, Karen, so have you got the app or the browser version? The which version? I'm actually on my phone. Um, I thought it would be nice to get out of the home office. So I'm going for a walk. It's a beautiful day, can I just say. Um, Natasha, you mentioned there's a keyboard shortcut. Uh, yeah, but it's not going to work if you're on your phone. Oh, hang on, I think I've got it. Here we go. Oh, true, Karen. I think I've got it. Um, you seem to have frozen. I told you to kid. Laura, can you please put your stuff on mute as you keep coming up with the speaker? And we need to hear and see Karen clearly. Yeah, sorry, hang on. Bloody kid. Uh, so it seems like we've lost Karen, but... I can just continue the session anyway. The CFSR is pretty easy to understand, as Karen said. Um, so you should be able to see my screen now. And to see the CFSR here, I'll just click on this. You can see these two thingy drop downs, which gives me access to see the results. Let me click those. Cool, huh? We are ranked right here. Can you believe it? Awesome. Then I'll type in that to get a different result. Amazing, hey? What great results, everyone. We should all be so proud. Um, I'll click that button and we're all done. I'll just ignore that pop-up message, though. Um, any questions? Too easy. Thanks, Keith. Those are some really great results for the company. Sorry, I've got to run. Kids not doing their homeschooling again. See you, everyone. Now you two listen. Okay, great. So, some more questions. I'm just going to end the meeting. i um, got to go myself. Got a bunch of back to back sessions. This online technology is pretty great, though. Hey. So, what did you think of that online meeting? Probably not the most accessible for anyone, but especially for people with disabilities. My name is Melissa Hayo and I'm the coordinator at the Disability Advocacy Resource Unit, or DARI for short. My team and I are going to talk about how to make online meetings accessible for people with disabilities. Firstly, I'd like you to experience how that meeting was for someone who is deaf or hard of hearing.
Creating accessible online meetings are organized just like any other face-to-face -face meeting you might have. Here are a few things you can do. Meeting invitation. How will you know what accessibility requirements are needed if you don't ask in your meeting invitation? Do you need an Oathland interpreter or closed captions? Oathland interpreters and captioning are a fees for service, so make sure when you plan your meetings you factor this into your budget. Before the meeting. Before the meeting, share the agenda and any content as far in advance as you can. Virtual meetings are tiring, so make sure your agenda has breaks and stick to the time limit. Be a good host. You know when you're in a teleconference and you can't tell who is in the call or who is speaking next? This is what it can be like for vision impaired people all the time. Be a good host and make sure everyone knows who is in the call. This can be a simple roll call. It is good manners and great inclusive practice for everyone. Explain the accessibility features. Explain the accessibility features in the meeting. Is there an Auslan interpreter or closed captioning services? Highlight the keyboard shortcuts. Remind people of the accessibility needs of others. Normalise the fact that it is the processes and systems that are the problem and inaccessible, not the people with the disabilities. Keep your video on. We are not going to judge your haircut or the decor in your bedroom. If a deaf or hard of hearing person told you they need to see your face to lip read, then you need to keep your video on so that they know what you are saying. Having your camera off is completely inaccessible for deaf and hard of hearing people. Go on mute if not talking. Go on mute if you are not talking, particularly if you are in a large meeting. Otherwise, it can be very distracting. For deaf and visually impaired people, the speaker focus will be lost. I'm Natasha Brake. I'm the project officer at Daru. Let's look at that meeting again and see what it was like for somebody who is blind or has low vision. So you should be able to see my screen now. And to see the CFSR here, I'll just click on this. You can see these two thingy drop downs, which gives me access to see the results. Let me click those. There are a few things you can do to make meetings more accessible for people who are vision impaired. Research the technology. Research the online meeting technology, as some platforms have more accessibility features than others. People who are vision impaired and people who cannot use a mouse rely on keyboard shortcuts to jump to buttons and perform functions. Video on. Audio is muted. Jump to chat. When software has not been designed properly, it's inaccessible to people who use screen readers. Button. 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 It's important to have a list of shortcut keys for both PC and Mac on hand. Describe what's happening on screen. It's okay to use images, slideshows and visual prompts, but be prepared to describe them. Key slides worked visually, but to be more inclusive, he might have said something like, this chart shows the region of Southeast Asia and the industry is technology. Make sure videos have the key messages in the dialogue or else use audio description. When you're demonstrating apps on screen, describe the fields and buttons you're clicking and give their location on the screen. Click the Create New button located at the top left of screen. Hi, I'm Damien, the online project officer at Daru. You also need to consider how someone with a cognitive disability might experience the meeting. This can include someone with an intellectual disability or an acquired brain injury. You might not be aware if someone has a cognitive disability unless they disclose it. So it is simply good practice to try and use the following tips all the time. Avoid jargon and acronyms if possible. Avoid jargon and acronyms if possible. Using jargon and acronyms is a bad industry habit that many people can get into. Remember, not everyone knows what the acronym means. It is simply good inclusive meaning practice to ensure that you are speaking to the audience in the same kind of manner and language that you would use talking to your friends and family about your project around the dinner table. Practice.
Practice basic functions. Practice. You should know how to turn your video on, mute people, share your screen, and troubleshoot problems for other attendees. Slow down. Slow down and create pauses. This gives note takers, people with slow internet bandwidth, or people using captions or Auslan interpreters time to catch up. Be wary of Zoom fatigue. Zoom fatigue is very real for all of us because of the extra concentration online meetings take. And this is especially the case for those with cognitive disabilities. So keep your meetings short and have regular breaks. Thankfully, our host Karen and presenter Keith have done a bit of accessibility training. Let's see the difference that makes. Hi everyone, my name's Karen Sutton. Thanks for joining today's meeting. Today we're looking at our customer feedback survey results. The acronym you might hear a lot is CFSR and how well our company did compared to others in the industry. Before I begin though, I'll just point out the accessibility features of this session. We have an Auslan interpreter with us today and we have a closed captioning service. You can click the CC button at the bottom of the screen or click the link in the chat box. In today's meeting, we have myself, Melissa, Natasha, Keith, and Laura, and our Auslan interpreter. Can I ask please that you all go on mute unless you're speaking, otherwise it's distracting for other attendees and difficult for our Auslan interpreter to follow the meeting. If you at any time have a question, you can put it in the chat box or virtually raise your hand by clicking the raise hand button at the bottom of the screen. The shortcut key to get to the raise hand feature is Control H on a PC or Command R for a Mac user. So I'd like to hand you over to our CFSR expert, Keith Jones. Thanks, Karen. So it's Keith speaking here. Um, to show you the customer feedback survey results, I'm going to share my screen. Um, I am aware that some people won't be able to see my screen, but I'll provide a detailed description as I go. And I'll also send around a Word document after the training. Um, so on my screen here, there are two drop down menus and I'm going to select our region, Southeast Asia, and select our industry technology to see our results compared to our competitors. So a bar graph has now popped up and it's got us ranked second in all categories. That's pretty amazing results, hey? Um, now I'll show which categories we performed best. Wow, that training really worked. Karen and Keith set the meeting up to be accessible by introducing everyone, making all attendees aware of accessibility needs and requirements. It takes a bit of research at first, but soon becomes easy. Remember to reach out to people who have let you know that they have accessibility needs. They are the experts at what they need and will tell you what you need to know and truly will appreciate your efforts. Being a part of virtual meetings is a new experience for many of us and we're all learning how to do it better. If you don't get it quite right for people with disabilities, don't worry. Apologise and find out what will be needed to make it accessible for next time. Then be proactive about making the fixes happen in the future. At Daru, we have developed a few resources to help get you started. Our online accessible meetings micro course and flyer is available for download from our website. The future of meetings. So what does that all mean for the future of meetings? There is a saying in the disability rights movement, nothing about us without us. So for you as the innovators and developers of new technologies, it is about getting people with disability involved from the start. How do people with different disabilities experience new technologies? Don't make assumptions. Ask them, talk to them, test with them. Find out what their needs and experiences are. We'd like to thank CSIRO and the event organizers for the opportunity to present at the Future of Meetings Conference. Thank you for watching. For more information and online training, visit Daru's website at daru.org.au.